Well, we're finally here. Now first, I just want to get off the bat, happy holidays to everybody. Last time, we took a look at a bunch of Call of Duty games. For the most part, they were an insult to the very discs that they were printed on. How they could fuck up so many games in a row is actually impressive. But this was Activision, so it shouldn't come as any kind of surprise. This is a game company that only makes video games that they believe will make them a profit. Yeah, it's not about the quality of the game, only the dollars it'll put in their wallets. Their slogan might as well be, if it'll be a hit, let's make some shit. An example is the game Sleeping Dogs. It was known as True Crime Hong Kong, but they cancelled the game because they thought it wouldn't be financially wise to continue making the game. They might as well have flat out said, this ain't Call of Duty, so it's not guaranteed to sell like hotcakes, so fuck that. With that in mind, let's take a look at a game I'm shocked I'm even considering reviewing. The Walking Dead Survival Instinct. Yeah, I'm just as surprised as you are. The Walking Dead is one of the most popular TV shows on the air right now, so naturally people want to see it be made into a video game. Telltale Games took their stab at it last year and made a game based on the comics, which resulted in one of the best games ever made. It was released in an episodic format, with the first episode being released in April of 2012, and the fifth and final one released in November of 2012. A retail version followed shortly after, in December of 2012. So, with the overwhelming praise and success that this one got, many wanted a game based on the hit TV show. And it happened. Back in March of this year. My birth month. Yeah, I had actually asked for this game for my birthday. Yeah, but I didn't get it. Little did I know that that was a blessing in disguise. But what did I do? Despite the horrible reviews this game got, I couldn't help myself. So I got it anyway. I was not happy. It's like being starving and then being given a dead rat to eat. So you may be wondering, how could a game based on the hit TV show The Walking Dead be bad? Let alone be that bad? You wanna know? YOU WANNA FUCKING KNOW?! Fine, I'll show you. But be warned, you're not gonna like what you see. And your jimmies are gonna be Russell. In this game, you play as Daryl Dixon, probably the most popular character on the show, which is an interesting decision. I figured you'd take control of Rick since he's the main protagonist. The game starts out with the most epic voice acting you'll ever see. You're playing as Daryl's father and you're bitten. Let's check out the acting here. What in the hell, Dixon? Aw, oh, Dixon, oh, no, man. Help me. Daryl, you okay? Dad? Oh, Dad, no! We can... Well, we could... Daryl, he's too busted up. Nothing can be done now except ease his suffering. Exquisite. Nominate these men for an Academy Award. What happened? Were the voice actors told to give no fucks? I don't get it. The complete lack of any kind of effort to make this a more serious and depressing scene is truly remarkable. Survival Instinct served as a prequel to the show. It shows you what Daryl and Merle did before they joined the group in Atlanta, though you have to get Merle a bit later in the game. The graphics in this game are a joke. I mean, come on. They remind me of Medal of Honor Allied Assault, and that game came out in North America in January of 2002. Yes, you heard me correctly. 2002. That's 11 years ago. I mean, yeah, sure, Survival Instinct has slightly more detail in the textures and the environments, but not a whole lot more. Comparing that to a game like Heavy Rain, which came out in February of 2010. Look at how much more detail this game has than Survival Instinct. And this came out three years before Survival Instinct. I mean, they're not awful, but you'd expect more in the year 2013. Now, yeah, good graphics don't make a good game, and believe me when I tell you that I agree wholeheartedly with that statement, but you need to excel in the other departments to make a good game, like good gameplay and a good story. 
So the first level shows you how Daryl's dad died and the epicness that followed afterwards. You meet this guy named Jess Collins, who I guess is some kind of mentor to you now that your father's gone. Once you get to your truck, you get to the travel part of the game. They could have made this actually interesting, you know, to actually strategize and think about the decisions to make. I mean, hell, it says right there, select your destination and how to get there. Back roads consume more fuel, but provide additional scavenging opportunities while taking highways, conserves more fuel, and all that bullshit. But instead they said, nah, fuck it, time is money and we need to shit this out into all the stores to fill our wallets. So you get a map and you choose the destination to go, and you're given a choice to take either back roads, streets, or highways. It really doesn't matter which one you choose because, like I said, there's zero strategy. You either have an option to scavenge for supplies or your car will break down and you'll have to look for fuel while avoiding zombies, which is way too annoying to deal with. So you pick your way, then you get the conversation with Daryl and Jess with the usual Academy Award worthy acting, and you just sit there and watch the car drive while it loads. Sounds exciting? It's about as exciting as watching a dog licking its ass while a parakeet sings Michael Jackson's bad. By the way, it takes a full minute to load. Why couldn't they have this be, oh, I don't know, more interactive? How about letting me actually control this part instead of forcing me to sit here like an asshole and watch a fucking cutscene? When you get to the location, you're given your inventory and you can choose which items to stash in your truck or bring with you. It's like the game is trying to give you the illusion that there is strategy involved, but there isn't. At all. Navigating through buildings with no power is a pain in the ass. It's too fucking dark and as disorienting as all hell. Now, yeah, it's probably supposed to feel scary, but that's what happens when it's done right. And in case you didn't guess, it's not done right in this game. The only fear I'm feeling right now is being afraid that I'll break my computer because if I'm pissed off, I'm getting at this fuckwad of a game. So I'm walking around and I hear this guy call for me. Come on up. How the hell did he see me? Use the ladder. Near the dumpster. Hey man, up here. Use the ladder? Why, thank you. I don't think I would have been able to figure that one out if you didn't tell me. So Jimmy Blake here is last officer left alive and he wants you to find radio batteries to call for help. What am I, a fucking errand boy now? I meet another guy, Warren Bedford, in a gas station who will give me fuel if he could join my group. You gotta get the keys from Uncle Lester to set up the generator to fill the tank with fuel. Now, the gameplay. Let's talk about it. It's as mindless as you can get. You pick up melee weapons such as a hammer or a knife and you hit the zombies, or walkers, or whatever the fuck you want to call them, and you hit them three times and they fall down like a sack of potatoes. You've got to be kidding me. You might as well just take a big ass piece of wood, hold it straight up, and then simply let it fall down. It's clear no effort was put into this. You don't have to kill the walkers though. You can avoid them by crouching and walking to make less noise, but this is just way more annoying than it should be because you have to hold the crouch button to remain crouching. If you let go, you'll stand up. Can you imagine how annoying it is to hold the controller like this when you're navigating your way through with a horde of these fuckers? What kind of dumbass program this shit? It seems completely random if the walkers spot you or not. You can be right next to them and they won't bat two shits, or you can be several feet away and they'll spot you. When they do spot you, they run after you and bitch slap you until you die. Well, either that, or if you're lucky, they grab onto you and you have to press the attack button when the cursor is red to instantly kill them. When you kill one, another one grabs you immediately afterwards and you just do the same shit over and over and over and over until you either fuck up enough to die or you kill them all. That's right, all of them. If you had 15 zombies chasing you and this grab sequence happens, you're doing it 15 fucking times. If you fuck up for a few seconds, you take damage, and that's easy to do because the cursor floats around a lot and it's very difficult to make it go where you need it to go. This stab prompt sequence is annoying, but it's also helpful, since no zombies can attack you except the one that's grabbing onto you, so you mow right through them if you can match the timing of the cursor, but it seems to be completely random when it happens. Right now, I've got barely any health, and look at all these fuckers chasing me. They keep hitting me, but I'm not getting the stab prompt. I don't get it, but for whatever reason, it's just not happening. And just as an extra kick in the nuts, every time you die, you gotta sit there and wait for the piece of shit to load. It takes 35 seconds to load, too. It might not sound long, but when you're getting pissed off from running low on patience and just want to complete the fucking level, it feels like forever. And also, the fucking zombies are still on your ass! A common complaint most gamers have is that when they die, they don't get to start off where they left off. But let me tell you, I'd much rather start off a few minutes behind where I was to avoid this crap. I mean, seriously? You're gonna throw me back right where I left off and still have the zombies chasing me? It's like the game is deliberately going out of its way to be an asshole. 
This game is just a clusterfuck of shitty gameplay. Every level, you just wander around like an asshole until you find some random survivor and then do their errands for them. That's all there is in this game. It's clear no effort was put into this game whatsoever. I would discuss the game more, but there's one problem. There's nothing to discuss. The whole game is just rinse and repeat of the same old cycle over and over again with no variety. Am I supposed to explain the same fucking thing several times? Finding Merle doesn't add to the game either because he's just another non-playable character. How did they fuck up Merle's inclusion? Did the thought of multiplayer never cross their minds? How cool could it have been playing as the Dixon brothers? But no, that would have taken time and effort to implement, and that's clearly not what they had in mind. This game was in development for less than a year, and how funny is that? Terminal Reality is the team behind this impossibly bad game, and they were obviously pressured by Activision to get the game out in a time period that wouldn't allow a quality product. But does Activision care? No. Not even a little bit. The Walking Dead is a huge hit TV show after all, so they knew it would so well, so they wanted it on store shelves as soon as humanly possible. So anyway, Merle gets in trouble with some gang or some shit like that and you get your crossbow, but at this point I couldn't give a flying fuck even if I tried to. Playing this game is like going into a pizzeria and being fed dog shit. You'd expect something awesome, but then you're left with a bad taste in your mouth. You meet more survivors and talk to them and get into bad situations and more survivors and more bad situations and... My attention span is depleting by the second with this game. It's hard to give a shit about any of this because the game is just so unspeakably bad. The voice acting sucks, the presentation sucks, and the storytelling is just awful. I can't believe that Activision fucked this game up as badly as they did. Now, yeah, I know, they were only the publishers, not the developers, but they're the ones who pressured Terminal Reality to shit this game into store shelves by a certain deadline. It's their fault. I've developed a grudge against Activision because of this. Well, that's about as far as I ever got with this game because, to be honest, I don't have the patience that's required to play this awful abomination of a game. However, I have heard some mixed opinions about the ending, so out of curiosity, I looked it up. Here's what I found. You take charge of a gun on some Humvee and you blast away at a ton of walkers. I think this is just awesome because this is obviously supposed to look epic and feel like a reward for all the bullshit this asswad of a game puts you through but it looks like fucking shit. This is just a joke. The walkers pose no threat whatsoever. In fact, the guy playing this could have not shot a single fucking bullet and he would have been completely safe. This is simply inexcusable. Anyway, one more round of Academy Award worthy acting from Michael Rooker and Norman Reedus commences and Merle mentions to Daryl how the pilot's been bitten and he tells Daryl that he has his back. And the game ends. Anybody with the patience to get up to this point in the game to get an ending like that deserves an award. And there you have it, The Walking Dead Survival Instinct. This game was obviously just a cash grab with absolutely no effort put into it. The objective was to slap a game based on The Walking Dead into stores faster than lightning can strike to make some quick cash, and as a result, what we got is a piece of donkey dick. It's a goddamn shame, and I still want a game based on the TV show. Well, that concludes part two of this episode. Now, I apologize if this isn't exactly what you were expecting for the big epic finale, but keep in mind there are, that there are some games that are just so bad that it requires an unfathomable amount of patience to, to, to get through these games. And unfortunately, some people, such as myself, just lack the perseverance and patience to push through. So anyway, happy holidays, and um, thank you for watching. Hey there everyone, I would like to thank everyone for watching this NC-17 episode. A lot of people requested that I make one more episode, so I thought I'd go all out and focus on Call of Duty, since it's arguably the biggest multiplayer franchise out in the market right now, and I did get loads of requests to do a modern game, including Call of Duty, like I mentioned in Part 1. Survival Instinct just came to me during the scripting of Part 1 as a game that would make a good candidate for an NC-17 episode, but believe it or not, it almost didn't happen. I wrapped up part 1 in late October and I held off starting on part 2 for a whole month because I genuinely can't stand even looking at Survival Instinct. So the idea of actually playing it was just terrible. Some of the footage I used was from YouTube videos because like I said I just don't have the patience for the game. Anyway, this concludes the final NC-17 episode. 
For the most part, I did enjoy making these two videos. It was fun to do after taking a year off, and I would say about 85% of the reason I did this episode was because a good amount of you kept asking me for it, so I kind of felt obligated to, to do it again. The other 15% was mainly because I simply got the itch to do it again. The future of Fantasy 17 is entirely in your hands, though. Although I did enjoy making this episode, it reminded me of just how much work goes into these videos. I spent combined probably 18 or so hours into making these two videos, probably even longer. It's a tiring process, but if the fans want more, then I might give you more. If the reception to this episode is good enough, then I'll certainly consider bringing NC-17 back, but it'll be every once in a while, like one episode every two or three months, or something like that. Something like five or six episodes a year sounds about right. I did get requests for this last NC-17 episode, but I unfortunately was unable to fulfill them, mainly due to financial and time constraints. So if you're one of the people who emailed me with a game to play for this episode, then I do apologize for not doing it. I do feel really bad about it, but who knows? Maybe in the future I'll get to these requests. Anyway, I'm rambling at this point. So again, I want to thank you all for watching these two videos. Thanks for liking NC-17 enough to make me bring him back. And to those of you who are hardcore fans, thank you for your support. Believe me when I tell you that your support does not go unnoticed. So, happy holidays, and I hope you enjoyed this NC-17 episode. Take care.